What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Legacy Evolution Deluxe Class Strong Arm based on the Robots in Disguise 2015 TV show. Now, as we very quickly take a look here at the packaging, fantastic artwork of her in both vehicle and robot mode. This is one of the boldest picks that I think we've so far seen for Transformers Legacy. I never in a million years thought that we would be seeing brand new figures of these characters, let alone ones that are released under Transformers Generations. I mean, it is kind of crazy but to be fair a more than welcome addition to my collection as we come around here to the back of the box awesome product shots of her in both robot and vehicle mode and let's not forget that all important evo fusion gimmick which may have just gone ahead and reached a new peak here with strong arms so with all that being said let's get her out here let's see whether or not it was a good idea to bring rid to transformers legacy and here we have Legacy Strong Arm. Now, first of all, I think it would be a good idea to kind of directly compare this action figure to how she originally appeared as part of the 2015 TV show. Now, as some of you guys may recall with some of the past universe-inspired figures, such as the Prime Universe RC, I haven't been the nicest in terms of what the Hasbro team did with the design. Personally, I thought specifically with RC, they just strayed away too far from what made that original design so awesome, whereas here with Strong Arm, and even with the recent Dreadwing slash Skyquake, they appear to have finally struck a perfect balance because this figure looks excellent. I mean, easily recognizable as strong arm based on R.I.D. And in terms of robots in disguise figures, I think I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably one of the best ones that we've ever seen. Unfortunately, that line was plagued with so many gimmick releases. So it is fantastic to kind of see those designs represented in a proper generations form. And I hope this is the first in many Transformers R.I.D. releases because personally, I would love to see Sideswipe and especially that crazy design of Grimlock done in either a Voyager or a leader class. But anyways, we take a look here at her details. I mean, the face sculpt looks banging. This is definitely one of the biggest selling points this figure has going for her. I mean, she looks fantastic. The detail is on point. The paint looks wicked. I'm so glad they captured the three main design elements of this character. So one of those being the head, the second one being the massive shoulders, which look so much nicer than I was expecting. And the third one being her door wings, you know, very similar to the live action movie Bumblebee. She did have these kind of sticking over her shoulders so yeah for this being a retool i think they've done a pretty good job and these are surprisingly very decently articulated so you can angle them here out to the sides to create for a slightly more stylized look which personally i think looks wicked so yeah in terms of her design i am super impressed i love the paint detail packed here onto the side of the arm the legs and the whole skirt piece and pretty much everything you guys see here from the waist downwards is a direct carryover from elite one but i do think it works pretty nicely here for strong arm it maybe would have been nice had some of these little rectangular pieces been picked out with a nice blue much like we're seeing here for some of the face detail but yeah, besides that, a really nicely done looking figure. Now, in terms of our articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it will look up and down. It can also rotate left to right. I'm so glad to see them modify the shoulders. These are not the same as what we saw from Elite One, meaning that this time round, they are way more articulated. So you can hinge them forwards and backwards, as well as out to the sides. Really does help to just get them out of the way when you're getting her into poses so that her vision isn't kind of blurred. So yeah, that's fantastic. The shoulders themselves will go out roughly to 90. Forwards and backwards, rotate here in the bicep 90 degree bend packed into the elbow wrist rotation as well as a very nice waist joint i was kind of surprised to see just how dynamic this is despite her backpack the hips can kick forwards that far back to that far out to the sides we do get a fire swivel as well as 90 degrees packed into the knee and then finally because this is the legacy elite one mold bang we do get a fantastic ankle pivot i do in some ways wish maybe they could have modified the foot design because that was one of the weakest parts about that original elite figure and strong arm is just a way better better character in my opinion than Alita 1 so yeah it would have been nice maybe had they modified these but besides that a fantastic looking figure and to be fair probably the sleeper out of the wave I'd say she's definitely a tie with Bombshell in terms of my favorites out of Deluxe Class Wave 4 she is pretty fantastic now, as we check out her accessories, unfortunately, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. So this is probably the weakest part about the figure. Unfortunately, she really does just include one blaster. It's pretty unsculpted. It is just translucent plastic. I wish in some ways, maybe she could have come with a slightly larger blaster or maybe some kind of handheld weapon. I guess technically you could count the light bar that we'll see in vehicle mode as her second accessory. But yeah, I mean, come on. This just really isn't cutting it for me. It doesn't look terrible when placing the figure's hands, but I do just wish for something slightly more substantial. I mean, come on. She's an enforcement officer. She should have one massive blaster so that she can take out those Decepticons with one clean blast. 
Now, as we take a look at a few robot mode comparisons, here we have Strong Arm alongside her kind of mold mate, that being the Legacy Alita One, which in its own right was a very strong figure. But comparing the two of them, I've got to be honest, guys, this is definitely the better use out of the mold. But I'm sure you guys want to know just exactly what is brand new. So basically, they changed the head, the shoulders, I believe they changed the forearms, the entire backpack, and some tiny pieces on the inside of the leg, which we'll see more of when in vehicle mode, as well as the chest. Besides that, pretty much everything from the waist down and the hands are identical to this original Elite One figure but personally I think they just took this mold and made it better especially in terms of the articulation that we can now get out of these shoulders because had they stuck to the same system that we're seeing here with this Elite One she would have been so compromised in terms of the poses that you could get her in and I mean come on just looking through my viewfinder right now strong arm looks so much more badass when in comparison here to Elita. Here she is alongside the second Fembot to grace a Legacy Evolution Way 4 that being Shadow Striker, which also was a very good figure. I mean, to be fair, Besides the Triters, I'd say that Legacy Wave 4 Deluxes have been fantastic, but in terms of which Fembot I prefer, honestly, I'm gonna go here with Strong Arm. I do just think overall she's the strongest figure out of the Wave, up there with Bombshell, as I said previously. Here she is alongside the Legacy Armada Universe Hotshot, and at least for now, with this Strong Arm, it really does seem like Hasbro are giving us the same level of quality with these R.I.D. Universe figures as we've come to expect from some of these Armada figures. I mean, this Hotshot also was very faithful to how he originally appeared back as part of the Armada series. So I am hoping going forward into Legacy Year 3, we can begin to see more universe characters, which are slightly more inspired from their universes than giving us kind of this G1 mashup. Because unfortunately, I don't own any of those original 2015 figures, I thought I'd give you guys the next best thing. So here we have her stacked up alongside the Earthspark Deluxe Class Bumblebee. And to be fair, in terms of design, aesthetic, and especially scale, I think these work really nicely. So for the time being, I I do think I'm going to be putting Strong Arm as part of my Transformers Earthspark display because, yeah, these look pretty fantastic next to each other. Here she is alongside the Studio Series 86 Voyager Class Ironhide. And then finally, the Earthrise Leader Class Optimus Prime. Now, as we get stuck into her transformation, surprisingly pretty complex, but does kind of have a high fiddle factor. I think that's mainly to do with the fact that she's a reed tool. Some things don't unfortunately have the greatest clearance. But anyways, we get stuck into it. First of all, you will want to come here to the inside of her leg and fold this panel out here. Do the exact same for the opposite side. So slide these out and then we can connect the knee. So there is a little locking mechanism that will just slide here over the top. So that's pretty much these done here for now. We can then come around here to the backpack, angle this here out to the side, take this flap here and hinge it all the way to the back and then take her door wings. Personally, I'd recommend to transform these now rather than later. So kind of angle these here to the side, rotate backwards and then snap these here into place. So do the same here for this side. So angle this here out to the sides, slide it here all the way backwards until it does snap very securely there into place. We can then come here to the waist, rotate this here all the way around. So the front is now facing the back. Make sure that it's as straight as possible. Otherwise, it may cause some issues in just a second. We can then come here to the legs, basically take the shins and angle these here out to the sides. Very similar in terms of the transformation to the Legacy Elite one. So do the same here for this side. We can then take the shoulder pads, bring these here backwards and line these slots up with the little tabs that we have on the back of the elbow. So snap those into place and then take these and squeeze them as tight into the torso as possible because you're definitely going to want to make a bit of clearance here for the front bumper. So do the same here for this side. So lock these tabs and slots into one another and then just angle this here down. We can then take the entire front part of the vehicle mode, lift this here all the way forwards, just like that, and then take the whole backpack and basically just shift it here downwards. So there are some little tabs which will shoot into some slots on the underside of the arm. So do the same here for this side, make sure that that does snap into place, and then just kind of open the shoulders up to allow the bumper to pass through, and then snap this here over the top, and it is pretty much plain sailing from here onwards. So take the legs, we can shimmy these up, there's a little slot that will go into this tab and then a little locking mechanism that will kind of catch onto this little mushroom peg that holds the wrist connector in. So snap that into place and do the exact same here for this side. And then for some finishing touches, reverse the feet backwards. 
And bang, here we have Enforcement Officer Strongarm fully transformed into her vehicle mode and surprisingly very accurate to how it appeared back in 2015 despite this being kind of a reshell of the Legacy Elite 1. I mean, it's a very successful retool. I love the way the vehicle mode looks. Amazing white plastic. We get this sick light bar here at the top. I like how they appear to be using a darker tint for the windows. We saw that with the most recent Powerlinks Hotshot. Personally, I think this looks so much nicer. Really does help to kind of conceal all of the internal robot mode pieces which would otherwise be visible but yeah nice detail here from the front I wish in some ways they had kept some of the paint apps that were shown on the back of the box such as those really nice blue highlights packed onto the headlights as well as here for the grill piece that would have made this pop a lot more in my opinion but yeah for the side of the vehicle it looks great as we come around here to the back to kind of go back to my earlier point I would have loved it had they retooled the feet because had they found a way to have taken these and basically reversed these here to the underside the vehicle mode would have been clean I mean it's already very nicely done but yeah, just a little more cleaner, and in terms of her important Evo Fusion gimmick, as showcased on the back of the box, and even detailed in the instructions, we can take her blaster, peg it here onto the rear of the vehicle, and bang, that is her all-important Evo Fusion gimmick, a gimmick which I am so hoping is very quickly phased out as we go into Legacy Year 3. Now as we take a look at a few vehicle mode comparisons, here we have Strongarm alongside her Moldmate Legacy Elite 1. So it's really here that you can see the extent of the retooling. I mean, they did change a lot about this figure. Here is Strongarm alongside the Legacy Evolution Shadow Striker, just so you guys can see how these Legacy Wave 4 Fembots stack up alongside each other. So... Yeah, very cool releases. If you pick up either of them, I think you guys will be happy. But in terms of my own personal recommendation, I think you may like Strong Arm just a little more, especially if you're not a fan of the whole kind of parts forming element that was apparent here with Shadow Striker. Here she is alongside the Legacy Armada Universe Hotshot. So average deluxe class scale, definitely a very decent size. Earth Spark Deluxe Class Bumblebee, and much like when in robot mode, I think the design aesthetic between both of these works so nicely. So, yeah, she is definitely going to be finding a home on my Earth Spark display because I think she looks pretty sick here alongside B. Here's how she fares alongside the Studio Series 86 Voyager Class Ironhide. And then finally, the go to comparison Earthrise Optimus Prime. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Legacy Evolution R.I.D. Universe Deluxe Class Strong Arm. A surprise, but definitely a welcome one. I mean, this figure is pretty awesome. I think the robot mode turned out way better than I was expecting, especially in terms of a remold. I mean, to think this came from Legacy Elite 1, they definitely are doing some crazy things over at Hasbro and Takara in terms of these remolds. I mean, we saw them remold the amazing DevCon from the SS86 Blur, so they're definitely turning mediocre figures into what is, in my opinion, a very solid release and she's also very accurate to how she originally appeared back in 2015 so I'm glad that they've finally struck kind of a good balance between updating the old and kind of keeping some of the new aspects that we've seen from some of the more recent legacy figures if you are a fan of the R.I.D. 2015 universe or you just want a decent version of this character design in your collection then I do not think you're going to be disappointed because yeah overall definitely one of the biggest surprises out of legacy year two for me I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below would you guys like see Hasbro approach even more robots in disguise universe characters in the future such as Grimlock or Sideswipe and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.